colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank the Institute of International and European Affairs, Ireland leading think tank of its kind, and its director, Tom Arnold, for giving my colleagues and me the opportunity and the honor to talk in this prestigious venue about MICTA and give the Irish audience some insight of this new group of nations. I must start saying that Mexico's foreign policy has a long tradition in promoting a more peaceful, fairer, and safe world. Guided by the principles of international law and multilateralism, Mexico has been a major contributor in different aspects of the international scene, such as climate change, disarmament, or denuclearization. Regarding this last matter, I would like to remind that the Tlatelolco Treaty, signed 49 years ago, establishing Latin America as the first nuclear-free populated zone in the world, is attributed to the efforts of the Mexican diplomat Alfonso Garcia Robles, who received the Peace Nobel Prize as the driving force behind this treaty. Due to its geographical position, Mexico is a place of confluence of various regions. Latin America, its natural environment, North America, with whom it has now an entwined economy destiny, the Pacific Basin, with whom Mexico has renewed contacts that goes back to the 16th century to the legendary now of China between Mexico and the Philippines, and the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean on the other side. Reflecting this sense of belonging to multiple regions and aiming at an active and responsible role in the world affairs, Mexico participates in numerous international fora and associations, beside the United System, of course, NAFTA, G20, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the Trans-Pacific Partnership in Negotiation, the Organization of American States, the Community of Latin America and Caribbean States, the Ibero-American Summit, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, and the Pacific Alliance with Chile, Colombia, and Peru, to mention just a few. On the other side, in the configuration of the new multipolar world, emerging market economies like Mexico acquire a new relevance and greater influence in the international affairs. New responsibilities and new necessities gave way to new groups of like-minded countries that transcend from the regional to the global sphere. In this regard, Mexico, together with Indonesia, South Korea, Turkey, and Australia, decided to establish an informal space for dialogue and cooperation among the five nations in the fringes of the United Nations General Assembly in September 2013. The members of MICTA are five significant economic powers, the 12, 13, 15, 16, and 18 largest economies in the world according to the International Monetary Fund. Also, each one of them play pivotal strategic roles in their respective regions. In addition to their relative economic and strategic weight, they also share important fundamental values, including a commitment to democracy and human rights, as well as their policy of free trade and open economies. The MICTAs have a capacity to pursue their interests not only through extensive regional networks in their regions, but also as regional leaders in global organizations, such as the World Trade Organization, the G20, the United Nations Security Council, or the G77 in the case of Indonesia. Other objective factors make evident the importance of MICTA as a group as Ambassador Adler already traced out. For instance, the combined GDP of the five MICTA, that is over 5.8 trillion, about 8% of the world economy, and their combined population is around 530 million, about also again 8% um, of the world's population. But how serious is the informal forum for its members? And I could say that it's quite serious. Although MICTA doesn't pretend to constitute another global governance structure, the value of MICTA is a forum, as a forum is reflected by how often the foreign ministers meet. That is three times a year. 
on the margins of the UN General Assembly Leaders Week, on the margins of the G20, and at the specially themed MICTA Foreign Ministers Meeting. Also, the ambassadors before the UN in New York and Geneva meet regularly to discuss the contribution that MICTA can make to strengthening global governance. And also have to say that the MICTA ambassadors to Ireland have uh, started to meet uh, regularly in, 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 in Dublin since 2014. Here I would like to clarify a common confusion about G20 and MICTA. Although the five members of MICTA, they are all part of G20, and moreover, they gather in its margins. MICTA is not a group within the G20, nor is intended to speak with one voice there. In spite that MICTA is expressly not designed to be a block and avoids any hint of bureaucracy or formality since its, since its inception so far, the foreign minister of MICTA have agreed common positions on important global and regional issues. In, in the case, in, in uh, a, a very important issue is terrorism, uh, and in their joint communique explicitly expressed their agreement to stand together against the common threat of terrorism and recognize the importance of governments and communities strengthening social cohesion to meet the challenge of violent extremism. MIGTA also highlighted the importance of preventing and addressing the issue of foreign terrorist fighters. Thus, over the past three years, MIGTA have issued a number of joint press releases on issues as diverse as Ebola, North Korean nuclear program, the downing of Malaysian Airlines MH17, global health, global governance, even on International Women's Day. MICTA members are also concerned about the global economy. It is a powerful advocate for the benefits of liberalized trade and investment. Therefore, they promote global prosperity through openness to trade and helping drive business growth. Another interesting feature of MICTA is that it's a forum exclusively of middle powers. That is, there is no influence of any hegemonic interest. Also, is a democratic alliance in which all of its member states bear a commitment to democratic, transparent processes. The grouping, in this sense, represents a democratic addition to the global governance framework and potentially a splendid bridge between developed and developing countries. Lastly, MICTA is not an alternative to global governance structures, as Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu pointed out, the grouping would be best serve as an important, an informal and democratic forum of debate that complements and now replaces other actors in the international community. Furthermore, there are vast areas of complementarities that open new ways of cooperation between them. Before the creation of this space of dialogue, the potential for cooperation between the five countries remained unexplored. Each country has its own particular strengths and experience to share, and in this case, the array of such strengths and experiences is enormous. Migration, governance, economics, technological research, education, and fight to organize crime are few of a few examples. To conclude, I just would like to remind that in this regard, the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs reiterated that last December that in 2016, Mexico will participate actively to consolidate MICTA in order to deepen its links with Indonesia, South Korea, Turkey, and Australia, and to collectively propose constructive solutions to the main global challenges. Thank you very much.